So here we are back at the Create World screen. I basically figured out in the downtime since the last episode I recorded that the bad performance I've been having with XV vs. Highlands was probably at least partly due to the 25,000 meter trip I took from the spawn point to where I eventually landed, because as the world file gets bigger, uh, it will perform more and more badly, especially on less up-to-speed computers such as mine. So, uh, we're going to start over with a new world and hopefully be able to actually live near the spawn point for a while to uh, get some more mileage out of this. Uh, we're going to call this playthrough Highlands V2. And then, for the seed. Um, been trying to think about this, and of course I had something in mind just before I started recording, and then as I started talking about other things, it completely escaped me. Uh, so we're just going to go with a phrase that's at least ironically near and dear to my heart. Because this can basically describe anything ever. Uh, so, unlike last time where we went with Highlands Large Biomes, we're going to go with just Highlands. Uh, in the config file, I have adjusted Highlands to be larger than standard. So it still will be a little bit more of a walk to get from one place to another, but it's not going to be thousands upon thousands of meters before you see a second biome. Uh, as always, we're going to allow cheats on because I want a safety net. And I think we're set. So let's start up a new world. Now, in this playthrough, I'm uh, using a few different mods than the last time. Um, in addition to Highlands, of course, uh, I'm using um, one of the later beta stages of Enhanced Portals 2. Uh, so as we go in through this, we will see uh, a little bit of how that works. Um, I'm also using... Boy, this is taking a while. I'm also still using the City Generators mod. I've, I've tweaked the config settings a little bit to make the uh, City Generation less common. Uh, and to... Um, make some of the cities a little bit less dangerous to explore in an early stage. Um, there's also a few other things that I'm basically just giving a test drive here before I uh, have to deal with them in one of the group games I play with uh, Istvan, Flailthroughs, and Angelique Daemon, uh, which we'll probably have a new series of that starting sometime in the near future. I think we kind of played out the last Horrible People world. And we're still just waiting. This has taken over a minute now. But um, hopefully this is actually going somewhere and the game hasn't crashed. So, not a great start to this. We actually had a, uh, a crash in the process of spawning this world. But I see now that's because we have uh, spawned into the Rock Mountains biome, which takes quite a bit of computer brain to... Um, actually render for the first time. And as you can see from the map view, the mountains are all around us. Uh, I actually fell about 15 blocks from uh, the starting point where it tried to generate me into the world. So right now our first thing is going to be to uh, make our way out of here with no tools. Because, as you can see, there's nothing immediately... Well, there's a little bit of dirt, but that's not super helpful. Uh, there's not much around us except for the rocks. Uh, on the map, when it comes back up... Uh, let's see. There's a little green over there. But I see trees off toward the south. So we're going to try to find our way out in that general direction. This might be a little tricky. This is almost as bad as uh, starting in the middle of an ocean. Uh, there we go. We're having a little bit of frame rate problem now, but once we clear the uh, rock or stone mountains biome, uh, it should get a little bit more smooth. This is just kind of how it works around this, because there's so much uh, block data to process at one time. As more of it gets rendered into memory, it'll also probably start to stabilize. 
let's see. Uh, it actually looks like pretty, pretty easy terrain heading toward the east, so I think I'm going to stick with that for the moment. There's a nice valley right there that I should have a easy time getting through. Now, of course, uh, starting near the Stone Mountains uh, is not a bad start uh, as long as you're close enough to other resources that you can make your startup tools and uh, actually be able to mine the stone out of here. Yeah, there's there's a tree line over there. Um, you know, there there is uh, no want for easily accessible stone up here. Uh, we've seen exposed iron already just in the short distance I've traveled uh, trying to get out of the mountain range. Uh, so as I was saying before, I uh, did install a few new mods. Um, this is actually pretty good. There's a forest right here, so uh, wood resources won't be a problem. Unlike last time, I do have tree capitators sorted out. Or at least it was before I started recording on this world, so... Really, there's no telling what's going to happen when I actually try to chop a tree. So let's go punch a tree down and get a uh, few wood planks so I can make the basic starting tools. Okay. Time for our first crafting table. And actually I'll go ahead and show you uh, one of the new mods I installed for this playthrough. The Extended Crafting Bench, or Extended Workbench, is the actual name of it. Um, you could also call it the Extended Crafting Table. It doubles the crafting grid space, and you can make um, another tier of tools and armor that are stronger, faster, and generally more alive than the vanilla tools. Um, an Extended Axe, or Pickaxe, or Shovel will cut through their respective blocks at least 50% faster. They'll have more durability compared to a standard tool. Uh, armor has similar values. And it's just generally... Um, it's going to be an interesting thing to have, I think. Um, so the first thing I want to make is an axe. I'm just going to make a normal axe for now, which actually I will need to uh, start by making sticks. I always forget that step. So, get some sticks in there. I want an axe so I can go drop a bunch of trees at once. Um, I will, uh, I'll make some of the extended tools a little bit later on when we're starting to get set up a little better. Uh, I must have forgot to disable the function in this version of Tree Capitator where, uh, the height of the tree has an impact on the chopping time. I am not a fan, but since it is something that can be turned off in the uh, config, I will probably do it between this episode and the next one I record. Because obviously this is a little bit absurd. I could punch the tree down faster than this. Well, I could punch this block out faster. It still is technically faster overall to chop the tree this way rather than punch all of the punch all of the logs forever. Um, okay. Uh, these are oak trees. I should get apples off of some of the ones that I tree capitate. And yes, I definitely have to go and change that option. Well, no apple from that one. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is uh, make a pickaxe, collect some of the stone that's immediately adjacent, and make a better axe. If I'm lucky, I might find some coal near the surface here, too. Or perhaps just dirt. Unfortunately, I cannot make a torch out of dirt. This appears to just be a rocky veneer over a hill of dirt. 
XV is not amused. Acrid is kind of entertaining, but not very productive, obviously. In any case, I just like referring to myself in the third person. Oh, good, more than one layer of... Damn it. Maybe this is just a dirt hill with stone over top of it. Now, if the pattern holds up, there should be dirt back here. Oh, hey, look! Stone! And dirt. I give up. Well, at least this way we'll have enough stone on hand to be able to cook some logs and get some coal going for torches for the first night. And I can use this cave as a shelter, which probably means that after I get some stuff started cooking, I need to go and look for sheep so that I can have a bed. Okay, that'll be a good start. Before anything else, I'll go ahead and make the furnace. Because I do have some log blocks that I can start cooking with. Then as soon as I got a uh, as soon as I have a coal cycle going, now I will uh, make the better axe. Okay, this should go a little bit faster. Faster. Well, decent. Definitely have to change that config option. This is, I think, Forest Hills. It's a, it's a uh, Highlands biome, but all the trees in this forest are just, you know, regular vanilla trees. There's not any of the special block trees uh, in the immediate area. I see some living things on the radar. Hopefully, uh going to be nighttime. Okay. Right now, I want to take this coal, put one block back in there, put uh, eight more logs on to cook. I'm going to go ahead and make six torches. First, I should make four more sticks so I can actually make six torches. If I have to, I will wall myself up into uh, the cave up there, but I do want to make some tools, or, well, tools and weapons. First thing's going to be two stone swords, because those won't last long. And I'm also going to make another pickaxe, a stone pick this time, because then I should be able to harvest some iron. If I had to spend the night up in the uh, cave, which is looking like a distinct possibility at this point. Although nothing hostile has spawned yet, but famous last words. Still no apples. Those are oak. Yeah, they're oak. That should be dropping apples, but not. I will need food sometime soon. You know, actually, hmm, let me see, uh, okay, I did not mean to set this to peaceful mode, but, uh, apparently that's why I haven't started getting hungry, and also why, there we go, there is the hostels, time to go hide, um, Oh, 
Okay. <clears throat> I was pretty sure I had started in survival mode, but um, apparently not. Good thing I killed that cow, or else I would have no food for the first night. That'll do me for a little while. Maybe while I'm in the process of digging this out, I can uh, find a little bit of iron to cook once it's safe to go back outside. Although, actually, it looks like most of the stuff that's spawned is underground. Out, out that way, though. Um, for now, this is safe enough. Unless I happen to run into a cave system, which is entirely possible, but... Torch. Ooh, there's iron. Okay, let's get that iron out of here. Ooh, quite a bit of it, too. Hooray! First thing I'm going to do when it gets light out is go cook some iron and make an iron axe and an iron pickaxe. Oh, there's a little more. Nice. Judging by the cluster of uh, brightly colored red things over there, I'm going to guess there is some sort of cave system in that direction. And so I won't be going that way right now. I, I can understand how there would be people who would think Ray's minimap is cheating, and strictly speaking, it probably is. Um, but I just I cannot even say how important it's been to how I play Minecraft since I discovered it. It's one of those things that I really, really hate to have to do without, and it, for the short time I did, uh, when... Uh, on the Horrible People server, we were running through uh, snapshots as they came out. It was really, really hard to play blind like that. So I, I've been really happy ever since I was able to get it back and keep it. Because really, one of the best things that you can have is to not walk into a situation completely unaware uh, especially, especially in a case like this where you're uh, right at the start of the game and probably don't have adequate means for self-defense. Because without the map, I could easily be walking out here to find creepers or... Uh, well, spiders are usually not hostile in sunlight, but um, I have had them attack me in the sunlight before. Um, but I could find creepers out here, for sure, or skeletons hiding under trees, and that would just be a bad thing. But with the map, I can see that, okay, it's pretty well safe to come out. So it may be cheating, but um, it's a cheating I'm happy to have. Okay, I'm going to set this iron to cook, and then that will be the end of this episode. I'm going to go make some config file changes, and then I will be back tomorrow with more Highlands.